Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Umineko. It's been a couple days, but I'd really like to see where Battler and Angie's adventures will take them as of yet. In the freakishly huge library. <laughs> この一冊一冊に私たちのような物語が記されてるんですって。ここは神様の世界だな。あんたたち風情が立ち入っていい場所じゃないってことが一目でわかるでしょ。After passing through the barrier, the three of them had finally made it inside the city of books. For some time, they were overcome by the countless otherworldly sights before them, but they quickly remembered their original objective. いい。まず勘違いしないでほしいの。あんたたちはベルンと戦いに来たわ。でもそれはベルンと直接戦って倒すとか、そういう意味じゃないんだからね。わかってる。そもそも。<笑> ダイベアドリーチェと互角にあんたが戦えたのはゲーム版の上で互角なルールに守られて戦っていたからよ。ゲーム版を出ればあんたなんかバチンって叩かれて手のひらの染みになる程度の存在なんだからね。それを忘れ
this one's got voices. The three of them swam out into the darkness of the deep ocean trench that was the city of books. In that massive, vast trench of bookshelves, they vanished into the darkness almost immediately. The library defied the common sense of the human world. The city of books. The word city was no exaggeration. And it was filled with green, glowing eyes that burned Castell's countless cat familiars. Trying to count them would be almost as crazy as counting all the fish in the ocean. They formed schools that swam all over the place. On the lookout for any fools who might have miraculously have managed to slip in and disturb their master's party. If Battler's group was found, the cats would report it instantly. They would probably form a pack, open their large mouths, and swallow them in a single goal. There would be no fight. In this place, Battler's party would be swallowed like tiny fishes if they were discovered. The warships surrounding the Golden Land were well more than a hundred strong. Each of them had dozens of cannons pointing at the door to the Golden Land. The goats on boats that packed the decks of the ships numbered in tens of thousands. Each one of them carried enough anti-magic toxin in their fangs to completely deny one of the game board pieces. This time, they would chew apart and eat away everything. The crowd of goats unleashed their rotten breath and dangling drool. At that time, Erica, who wanted to avoid trouble and hoped Vita would be able to convince Lambda Delta to surrender peacefully, was sitting alone, calmly enjoying the tea Renove had poured her. Of course, even Erica wasn't planning to give them unlimited time. In her mind, she had already decided to allow them three yawns before stepping in. あの手跡が敗北主義者と罵られながら、みんなを説得してるのを眺めるのね。あの短気だったお嬢様が、よくそここまで大人になられたものです。何がおかしいの?いいえ、次の紅茶はいかがです古今東西、あらゆる姉
Lambda hasn't talked to us. The golden key was being kept in a room inside the city of books. However, perhaps room wasn't a fitting word to use. It was large enough that you could probably fit two domed baseball stadiums in it, if you tried. Even so, in this city, these were called rooms. Floating in the center of this vast room were several sacred magic circles. Wrapped around by these magic circles was Angie's gold key. Surrounding this were countless emerald green stars, which looked like a slowly revolving planetarium. The eyes that numbered the same as the stars were all glaring in the same direction. One of the cats cat paddled towards Eva, meowing that no one was allowed to enter this room. After looking at each other with suspicious eyes, the cats glared at Eva again, as though saying that they hadn't heard of any such order. Excuse me while I plug in my headset. Eva lifted up her golden staff. In the floor and ceiling of the vast room were covered with red lines. The reaction from the cats was lightning fast. They realized instantly that this was hostile behavior. The entire emerald green constellation writhed and became a single massive deep sea fish, which charged at Eva with its massive open mouth open wide. However, at the same time, the red lines on the floor and ceiling, the massive spider web, pinched itself together and crushed the fish. Twisted it, spun it around and around, and compressed it to the size of a small ball. Then that ball-shaped thing burst open, leaving nothing left. It all happened in an instant. <laughs> the witch hunters were holding a convention in the event hall. After all, when the sheer mate of his diary was opened, the endless cat box would be lost along with the countless imagined stories that had entertained them for so long. So this final convention was a time for them to air their best theories one last time. While the opening of the cat box did give them a slight lonely feeling, they couldn't contain their excitement as intellectual rapists. Not when they knew that Roken Jima mystery was finally going to be solved once and for all. If that box were opened, a single girl would be hers. However, their jaws and fangs couldn't care less. The witch hunting goat nobles kept licking their lips, wanting to chew apart the guts of Beatrice's cat box as soon as they could. Seated upon a grand throne the size of a pillar, Featherine listened in on the nonsense being spewed from the mouth of the goat nobles. A black cat wearing a cape silently appeared and whispered something into Featherine's ear. <laughs> the cat bowed humbly and vanished. 
Featherine waist, waist raised her wine glass high and laughed as she looked through it to the light of the chandelier, which was as beautiful and majestic as the moon. <laughs> this battler's group moved forward, darting from bookshelf to bookshelf and avoiding the eyes of the cats. They found something strange. Written with a faintly glowing red substance was a letter and an arrow. K. Very suspicious. That's what it looked like to them. Angie traced the red arrow with her finger. It was written with very faint, thin strings that had been tied together. This red stuff, which melted away like cotton candy when you touched it. Is it on, Eva? いや。俺にも分かった。ラムダ。これを書いたやつは信用できる。多分。In the arbor, the argument over whether they should surrender or fight continued without signs of stopping. Every now and then a small fight would break out, which fortunately ended up delaying Erica's third yawn. However, they didn't know how long they would have to continue this fake fight. Keeping this high level of tension going was physically stressful. The instant they tired out and the tension faded, Erica would probably demand a verdict. They had to constantly appear to be trapped and agitated. It was a battle of weariness and tension. This was their fight. Erica waited patiently. Now that she had tired of tea, she was watching Ronobe perform some magic tricks. And seemed to be enjoying herself considerably. You go, Ronobe. Even Ronobe, who was usually aloof from the world, was fighting. If Erika got bored and had a tantrum, an all-out attack would probably begin at once. He was also putting his life on the line in the fight to buy time for Battler's group. Is the fiercest leader in the argument, Bido wore out the quickest. She breathed heavily, and her face was so pale it seemed she might faint at any moment. もう Oh. Um. Whoops. Erica suddenly rose from her chair. 
Renovi tried to coax her back into her seat, but Erica's attention was completely focused on those arguing under the arbor. そう私は降参が良いかと思います。私がここに訪れて一番最初に聞いたあなたの発言です。ですが今あなたは降参しました。ここは戦うべきです。戦わずして敗北を受け入れることなど今後どうだんです。私は最初からここは戦い抜くべきだ
As evidence, a bead of sweat dripped down someone's cheek, fell, and hit the table with a tiny yet audible splat. That might have something to do with the rain, I don't know. Then frozen time shattered, and in the same instant, the white chair Eric had been sitting in broke apart. The stakes of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory and the high-velocity rounds from the Chiester Sisters hit the chair at exactly the same time. And a few moments after that, Eric is sitting in that chair faded and vanished. In an instant, Eric had moved to a spot behind the chair. Her expression remained as blanketed as it had been. However, there was now something in her hand that wasn't there before. As the seven lightning strikes of the seven sisters raced at her once more, she batted all of them away with a sight. Erica lifted her left hand, the one that wasn't holding the sight. Now that's what I call elegant. So, arigato. Bern Castell set down the receiver and crossed out yet another name on the list of Leon Videlta's notable friends. Something was wrong. Everyone she called hadn't heard anything from Leon Videlta. They weren't just playing dumb. They really knew nothing about the strange ruckus Leon Videlta was trying to stir up. Even Bern Castell was starting to suspect that something was fishy. Then a black cat leapt in and meowed a frantic report. <laughs> she tore the phone receiver from its stand. The number she dialed was short. It was probably an internal line. However, after listening to it ring several times, she slammed the receiver down again, finally managing to break the phone. <laughs> Bert Castell, overwhelmed with emotion, kicked the table over. Then, the room finally grew bright. It was like green sunlight. A bright green light waved about, giving the illusion that a green sun was rising and lighting the room up. It was a sign that Bern Castell's army had been given an emergency summons. What was now an emerald green nebula let out a roar of delight that shook the bookshelf cliff. <laughs> 